appreciate how far you've come, appreciate how well you're doing, and be proud of the fact that you've managed to get through even just some of this workout, because it's not an easy one, and I think you've done a bloody good job for even getting through the first movement. I can't tell you how many times this video has been requested and I've deliberately delayed doing this video for this long for a reason. So obviously I recently covered a part of Caroline's fuel series about a month ago from now and a lot of people said Harry you know what have a look at the iron series because obviously I know you love your resistance training you love your hypertrophy work which I do I really think the iron series would tickle your pickle. I thought you know what that is actually a fantastic idea because a lot of my focus personally is resistance training and I do believe it's very beneficial for a lot of people although I try not to ensure my, my channel is solely focused on hypertrophy it's just speaking about improving workouts for a variety of different goals i figured you not know caroline has done this re really resistance training dominant workout series being the iron one and obviously as people have recommended i look at it i really should but i do want to do it too soon after the fuel series but obviously we're not going to cover the whole thing we're going to look at one of the workouts in particular obviously last workout i looked at lower body this workout we're going to look at her iron series 30 minute upper body workout shoulders back chest i've been through it a couple of times already i've, I've already found a couple of talking points which I think could be quite quite juicy and good to speak about and that's what we're going to do after we do what needs to be done. If at any point you decide you like the video please let me know you like the video by liking the video. 1300 likes in the first 24 hours is the goal. If we can reach that that'll be bloody splendid I would very much appreciate it. A lot of you at home watching this video haven't actually subscribed to the channel. Near enough half of you watching this video probably haven't subscribed to the channel. I know you're probably still on the fence like you know what do I want to invest my subscription into a pale man with a massive forehead on my screen that uploads twice a week. I'm not sure. If you don't want to do it for me, do it for the photo of my family puppy that is on screen right now. And for the people who have been here for about a year or so, here's a recent photo of T-Ruff, you know Truffle, and as I'm sure a lot of you have been wondering how he's been. And he's absolutely bloody massive, that's how he's been. He's absolutely jokes. he's been doing Caroline's Iron series, I'll tell you that for free. Oh yeah, and at the end of the video I do comment question of the week. If you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below in the comment section and I shall do so. But we're going to do the hats, I'm, I'm going to be straight with you again. I've actually made a mistake here, I've embarrassed myself. And it's quite funny, because when I bought the hat, I was there like, you know what, that looks like a normal size hat. Update, I really hope the hat isn't regular sized because although my head is deceptively large, it's not that large. Like, do you know what I mean? That is something else. All right, we're gonna crack on because I don't wanna take too much of your time, I already have, and we're gonna go through the Iron Series right now. I'm gonna give a few bits and bobs and just discuss some things, what I like, what I think could be improved, and just my thoughts in general regarding the shoulder, back, and chest workout. The dumbbells I'm using for your reference are 17 and a half kg each. I will also use 10 kg each, and then the final exercises, 4 kg each. Obviously I know you shouldn't compare what you're lifting in comparison to somebody else because at the end of the day strength is relative but I, I do actually appreciate that Caroline speaks about the weight she's using because it also gives you at home a bit more of a realistic idea of how much you might need to drop the weight depending on the movement. If you see Caroline's drop it from about 17 and a half kilos down to 10 kilos and down to 4 kilos you can gauge that you should probably drop your weight by a similar percentage when you go about your exercises. So I think it's quite, quite a handy tool that she does that. But throughout we will of course be using our core biceps and triceps great bit of information there so you've got to think about when you're doing any kind of pushing movement like pressing movement because extension of the elbow is involved you will be working the triceps because their primary function is elbow extension so just because you're not doing tricep isolation work doesn't mean your triceps are being neglected because you will be doing other kind of pressing be that horizontal or vertical same with pulling motions if you're doing any kind of rowing variation or if you're at the gym you're doing like a pull down or pull up variation things along those lines one of the primary functions of the bicep is elbow flexion you are flexing the elbow when you are doing pulling variations to work the back therefore the biceps will be involved as like a secondary muscle so fear not you don't necessarily have to isolate the biceps and triceps you can certainly get ample volume on both the biceps and the triceps doing workouts like this depending on your goals obviously with the chest press and the flies inhale as you lower exhale to lift so the way I, was, I kind of always look at like breathing when doing an exercise is a squat university actually did a really good post on this is going underwater so for example when you're squatting breathe in at the top hold that breath obviously you do the core bracing and all that stuff go underwater so you you do the rep 
You finish the rep and you breathe out once you've completed it. So you breathe in before initiating, breathe out upon completion. And I typically transfer that over to most of my movements. As breathe in while you're like initiating the eccentric portion of the rep, so let's say breathe in as you're lowering the dumbbell on a chest press, you're risking losing tightness in certain areas, all sorts. So it's better when you're doing a chest press, breathe in to start, go press out, rather than go I probably look a bit silly doing that on screen, but you know what I mean. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way to do it, that's just my personal preference. So we're gonna look at it, starting with the dumbbell chest press, a great movement to start with, because it's a compound movement, therefore like a multi-joint movement, and a movement where you're gonna be lifting a lot of weight comparatively, I think starting with the chest press is a great shout. I'll tell you what I do also like, I think Caroline's production quality on all her videos is bloody Blended, it really is. So we've got a bit of an arch there. I think that's fine. That's if anything, I actually do agree with that. I, I do arch my back when I'm doing any kind of pressing. I do try and keep that arch more to like the thoracic spine rather than the lumbar spine, because essentially you've got to think about you're pressing down more towards the thoracic than you are to the lumbar. Lumbar being lower, you're not pressing to the lower. So Caroline is really flaring her elbows out here. That can put quite a bit of pressure on the shoulders, because if you're thinking about range of motion, when I flare my elbows out, I can only go to there. When I tuck my elbows in at 45 degrees, I can go all the way down to my chest. So it's like with the video I did last week when I spoke about shoulder pressing. Don't press out like that. Press in the scapular plane, so tuck your elbows. Same sort of thing applies. So when you're doing kind of any pressing variation, I do typically press rather than out like that at 90 degrees, I do try and press at 45 degrees. It's a bit more comfortable on the shoulders, might help with range of motion, and it does also better align with the fibers of the pec. And that, the floor press is a fantastic movement. Obviously in an ideal world, you would want to do it on a bench press because then you can get better range of motion. And because it's a, a dumbbell chest press, it does target the pecs in their lengthened position. So, so the peak tension is down here rather than up here. But we're at home and we may not have access to a bench. So if you don't have access to a bench, I think the floor press is absolutely fine and I, I fully support it. What I do like about this is because it's a bit different, it's a bit more targeted on the, the growth of muscles, so hypertrophy based on Caroline's description, it's decent that she is doing like multiple sets of things, but straight sets, so do a set, resting, set, resting, rather than doing like a circuit, things like that. Because although circuits are fantastic, they do certainly have a time and a place. When you're really looking at hypertrophy, which seems to be what Caroline is focusing on here, it is typically better to do straight sets. And in an ideal world with hypertrophy being the main goal, you would actually want to rest a bit longer. And I covered this in a video last week, I believe, where I spoke about the kind of four tick points of recovery. So things like, is your breathing recovered? Is the localized muscle recovered? Is your nervous system recovered? Have surrounding muscles recovered? Things like that. And that rest period typically falls into the three to five minute range for most people depending on the intensity but I also fully acknowledge that this is a workout that's deliberately limited to a time frame so it's a 30 minute workout so if Caroline were to rest for three minutes between sets this workout would likely be a lot longer than 30 minutes for that I, I fully support it I think that's fine but if you feel when you're doing this workout that you need a bit more time to recover don't be afraid to take an extra 15 seconds so pause the video take a moment if you find your reps dropping off too much so let's say you've done a 10 then you did an eight, then your last set you couldn't even get five, the likelihood is you weren't recovered enough. And obviously the hypertrophy rep range is, is within that kind of five to 30 mark. So if you're going less than five, the seamless to fatigue ratio and the kind of return on investment will say it isn't really worth it. So the way I kind of look at like a chest press is that you kind of control the way down and then explode up. You can do a brief pause at the bottom if you want to, it really depends. So I see it like a rubber band. So you pull the rubber band back and then you ping it to let it go. Caroline does speak about keeping a slight bend in the elbows. Yeah, I think that's pretty solid. I think if you keep the arms straight, it can risk putting a bit too much pressure on the biceps and you may find that rather uncomfortable. So yeah, a slight bend is definitely a solid one. If this wasn't a home workout, I would personally remove the dumbbell flies entirely. Because if you think about how it works the muscles, so works the pecs, the dumbbell fly does not work the pecs any differently really compared to the dumbbell chest press. You're taking the peg to its length and position and you're still bringing the humerus across the body. Whether you go like this or like this, the humerus is still following the same path and the resistance profile is not changing because it's a free weight. So a fly variation would actually be much better suited for like a machine or a cable machine, something along those lines, if, like say if you weren't at home, because then due to the nature of the machine and the cable, you can then take that movement from focusing on the length and position of the peg like a dumbbell fly and a dumbbell chest press does, to then focus on the shortened position of the pec, where the peak tension is at contraction rather than at stretch. Because if you do comparatively look at a dumbbell fly versus a dumbbell press, like I said, they very much
much do the same thing, but the amount of load you can use is greatly reduced when doing a fly versus a press. Therefore, it makes more sense to just do a press. But we are not in the gym, we're at home. I think doing a dumbbell fly, if you want to do this variation to do something a bit different to a chest press as well as a chest press, I think it's absolutely fine because you're essentially limited to dumbbells and the floor here. Therefore, you must make do with what you've got. And I think when you are at home, I think that's absolutely fine. It's just for a lot of you who I know do have access to the gym and may well go to the gym in future if you are doing dumbbell flies at the gym, I would probably choose a cable or machine variation instead. What do we have now? The Renegade Row. Yeah, I think it's pretty solid to us because of the positioning of the body, you are really going to bring in a lot of the core and I'll be some of the obliques as well to avoid that rotation because when you kind of shift to one side, your body is going to want to rotate. Obviously, one of the primary functions of the obliques is rotation, anti-rotation. The camera is the technique from first view was bloody spot on there. It's got good wide stance, a bit more stability, love it. Good neutral spine, minimizing that rotation. To there's barely any rotation at all, which is amazing. So the, it really depends what you're trying to work here. The peak contraction of the lats, so when the lats are at their shortest position, is when your upper arm is in line with the body. Maybe a bit lower than that, so when you're in line with the with the body. That's peak contraction of the lats. Any further than that, you start bringing in more of the, the mid-back muscles, um, which is fine, because at the end of the day, you are likely probably not doing this purely to place as much emphasis on the lats as possible. You were probably look, doing this to, to work the back in its entirety. And I think that's fantastic. The big thing here is because Caroline is keeping her upper arm close to the body, so adducted to the body, that's also going to place a lot of emphasis on the lats. When the arm starts coming further away from the body, you start shifting that emphasis to more of the mid to upper back musculature. Bloody solid technique. Honestly, really clean. Good control as well. You see how Caroline, even, even though you know she's fatigued, she's not yanking it, she's not swinging it, she's keeping it controlled. And that's some heavy weight as well, so I do respect that. So the dumbbell pullover is an interesting one. A lot of people commonly do this for the lats, but the big thing you've got to focus on here is, is when you're looking at really emphasizing the lats, you don't really want to go above 120 degrees of shoulder flexion. So about, let's say, there to be honest. So we'd say that's about 120 degrees at the armpit or so. That's really where the lats kind of find their limit. Anything beyond that puts you in quite an unfavorable position. So for that reason, the dumbbell pullover is not really a fantastic lat movement because again, the majority of the emphasis here is when you're beyond that 120 degree mark all the way down to, to 90 or so. Whereas in the ideal world, you go from basically 120 to zero degrees. Ryan Dewars did actually mention this in a TikTok quite a long time ago actually. And he basically presented the argument that due to the line of pull, a movement like this, although still not fantastic for the pecs, may actually be better suited for the pecs than the lats because it better aligns with the orientation of the sternal and costal pec fibers. So sternal being the, the kind of middle pec fibers and costal being the lower pec fibers. Whereas when you look at the upper pec fibers, those are the clavicular fibers because obviously clavicles up here. Personally, it's not a movement I would actually do myself. What I would probably do because you're at home, you've already done that kind of renegade row, which plays a lot of emphasis on the lats. Fantastic. What I would try and do is maybe like a leaning. So you should see Caroline's got this table there. Maybe she could lean on that or a standing bent over 45 degree row. So your body is kind of as horizontal as possible and you're rowing with your arms at 45 degrees. That then places a bit more emphasis on the on the upper back. Very similar to a, a rear delt fly, which I know is covered later, but because you can shift a bit more weight, it might be a bit more appropriate for upper back musculature, as we've already worked the lats quite sufficiently in the previous exercise. So that would be a consideration. So now we're on to the old shoulders. It turns out I can't really say too much about this because I did speak about the shoulders in quite a lot of detail last week with the Lily Sabri video. Well, see, so we're looking at the, the shoulder press. Fantastic tempo, look at that control. But the big thing, again, I, I will really go to is rather than pressing with your elbows out here, scapular plane, so 30 to 45 degrees in front of you. You can get a lot lower, a lot more comfortably and also better aligns with the anterior delts which is obviously what you're trying to place the majority of emphasis on when doing a shoulder press movement. So a rear delt fly again this is actually why I almost complained about in the Lily Sabri video that there was not enough emphasis on the rear delt actually there was no emphasis on the rear delts in Lily's video so it's great to see that Caroline is including rear delt work here and this position is kind of similar to the one I was speaking about with the, the upper mid back row. So with the rear delt fly what I said in the Lily Sabri video very much applies here I would kind of keep the arms as straight as possible or maybe with a slight bend as I did in that video which is probably on screen now and you swing back at 45 degrees because again the rear delt fibers align at 45 degrees therefore it makes sense to typically go through the range of motion that best aligns with the fiber orientation and it does seem like Caroline's arms are actually coming back about 45 degrees here 
They might be a bit more flared than that, but they definitely don't look like they're flaring at 90, which is fantastic. That's good stuff from Caroline. But I would, I would typically maybe keep the arms a bit straighter and treat it more of like a swing rather than a fly. But yeah, it, it's fantastic to see that Caroline is incorporating some rear delt work because I know a lot of content creators kind of fall short on the rear delt, so it's fantastic to see that Caroline isn't. And we've got lateral rays in there as well. Bloody fantastic. This is also something I mentioned in the Lily Sabri video. She placed too much emphasis on the anterior delt, whereas Caroline's done an anterior delt dominant movement being the press, a rear delt dominant movement being the re reverse fly, and now we've got a side delt dominant movement being the lateral rays. Bloody versus the three heads of the shoulders ticked off. Bloody fantastic stuff. Lateral raise, the same thing as the, like, the shoulder press applies here, is rather than kind of raising out to the side as you would, that can really increase trap involvement. So you may find that your traps are getting really sore and almost give you out before your delts do or maybe burning. Slight hinge at the hip so you're leaning forward, raising about 30 to 45 degrees in front of you. So in the scapular plane, better aligns with the side delt and also reduces trap involvement. Arms as straight as possible like you're almost trying to touch the corners of the room you're in. Bloody fantastic to see that Caroline has included all three heads of the shoulders. Arguably if you are doing the rear delt fly there could be a consideration you don't necessarily need to do the upper back row as I mentioned earlier due to the load lifted and the fact you're a bit limited to equipment being at home I would still consider swapping the pullover for the upper back row. So now we've got a two-part finisher the first part being an alternating dumbbell front raise as we see here the second part being a dumbbell front raise with both hands at the same time I'm not a massive fan of the dumbbell front raise again if I was at the gym I'd say bin it off entirely and do a cable variation because you can better work the anterior delts by doing so but obviously at home we don't have access to a cable machine therefore we must consider what we do have access to which is dumbbells as front raises go i think dumbbell front raise is probably the best front raise you could probably do at home with, with no equipment but i i don't know if doing a front raise is actually entirely necessary because you've done a lot of anterior delt work already you've done the dumbbell chest press the dumbbell chest fly arguably the dumbbell pullover as well and also the dumbbell shoulder press that's a lot of anterior delt work there alone because the anterior delt skeps work so heavily doing a lot of your chest work is it really necessary to include an additional anterior delt work i would arguably say no if i was going to do a shoulder finisher i would probably place a bit more of that shoulder finisher emphasis either on the the side delts or the rear delts so the posterior delts or arguably if you actually want to get kind of all three heads involved for that finisher you could do something like a dumbbell yti but as a whole honestly i think it's a bloody splendid workout and i certainly was not disappointed because obviously the focus of this is very much hypertrophy driven the emphasis on straight sets without an excessive number of supersets really separates this from some of her other workouts and even then even her movement selection is bl pretty bloody solid so she's placing a lot of emphasis on those compound movements which should obviously play a, a huge role in a lot of programs especially if your consideration is being hypertrophy and a lot of the movements that caroline has indeed selected are bloody splendid movements at that although i did make some some technical adjustment suggestions and movement adjustments suggestions throughout the workout that is largely down to choice i'm sure caroline has chosen these movements for her own reasons i'm merely stating that if i were to adjust it myself i would make the adjustments i suggested but i'm not saying what she is doing is wrong whatsoever there is no right or wrong you have to do what's best for you for you and for your audience i think as a whole this is a bloody good workout and i'm very much impressed by what i have seen here but again like i said at the start please don't compare what you are lifting to what caroline is lifting but strength is very much relative you've got to consider so many factors why you're lifting like what you're lifting for what your goals are how long you've been lifting all sorts caroline is bloody strong but she's also a professional this is her job and she lifts for for this purpose and has been doing so for quite some time so so please don't feel disheartened if you're not lifting as much as caroline you're doing a bloody fantastic job and provided you are training for sufficient intensity and you are doing the best that you can do you will indeed see results and if you're not seeing results you would ask yourself what can i change what can i do better appreciate how far you've come appreciate how well you're doing and be proud of the fact that you've managed to get through even just some of this workout because it's not an easy one and I think you've done a bloody good job for even getting through the first movement but honestly as a whole great workout few tips and tricks throughout so that may hopefully help you either when you're following along with Caroline's workouts or maybe if you don't do Caroline's workouts hopefully some of those tips and tricks may help you at the gym or during your other home workouts whatever it may be and if any of the tips and tricks I suggested throughout the, the video did in fact help you please do consider liking the video and maybe even subscribing to the channel because I would very much appreciate it and I would love to have you on board with the TFNL community. But yeah, that is it. And I'm bloody impressed by that video from Caroline. I think the Iron Series is looking pretty solid from first impressions. I'm very much looking forward to exploring more of it. But before I do so, we must obviously crack on with comment question of the week. Luckily the camera stopped recording, but I nearly fell off the chair because that would have been bloody embarrassing. 
Ah, this individual asks if I can do a video discussing women and lifting weights, as they're being told all the time that women shouldn't do deadlifts or lift heavy in general because of their anatomy and internal organs. I'll, get, I'll keep this one short and sweet, as a few people in the, the comment section have actually answered this for me already, but I thought it'd be a good one to discuss here. Uh, that is a nonsense. Your gender does not determine whether you should resistance train or not. What determines whether you should resistance train or not are your goals. It's a very outdated belief that women shouldn't lift weights. It's a shame that that belief still is being pushed by some people, which I know it is. Yeah, that's it. That's comment question of the week. And if you too have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week, and I shall do so. But yeah, that is also the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully you managed to take something from it. And again, if you would like me to do more for Caroline's like iron or fuel series in the future, where I can give some tricks and tips while watching the video, please let me know in the comment section. I shall certainly do so. But regardless of whether you agreed or disagreed with my opinion on this video, thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating the fact that my hat is very small and my head is not actually that abnormally large, I do promise, and thank you for tolerating the video.